It cannot be denied that the Joker is, without a doubt, the most popular and iconic comic book villain in existence. He is the perfect foil to Batman. You made me. Remember. Two enemies destined to fight it out forever, one representing law and order, and the other representing chaos and anarchy, which is no doubt why we've seen four live-action Jokers since the first Batman movie, more than any other villain by far. However, while Heath Ledger's Joker is considered one of the greatest villains of all time, Jared Leto's Joker has been pretty negative overall. Thankfully, comic writer Grant Morrison, who penned Arkham Asylum, a serious house on serious earth, introduced the idea that Mr. J reinvents himself every so often, explaining why his personality changes so drastically from comic to comic. If the DCEU uses this theory, they could have multiple actors play the Joker. Let us know what your favorites are, and remember to push that red button to subscribe for more. Jake Gyllenhaal while it may be strange to have Heath Ledger's on-screen lover portray the same character as him, there's no denying that Jake Gyllenhaal could well be the man for the job. As an actor willing to change his body in some dramatic ways for roles, Jake Gyllenhaal becomes his characters in ways that very few actors can. He was virtually unrecognizable in his role as Billy Hope in the 2015 boxing movie Southpaw, bringing a ferocious energy to the performance. It is, however, his role in the modern classic Nightcrawler, no, not that one, that sells us on him as the Joker. While undoubtedly more quiet than the Joker, Lou Bloom is a horrifying character who's willing to go to extreme lengths in a job that truly can drive the sanest man to lunacy. Jake plays a calculating, slimy, and altogether creepy monster of a man who will no doubt remind even the most casual of comic fans of the Clown Prince of Crime. While some may claim he's not as bombastic a showman as the Joker, the next actor for the role certainly is. Willem Dafoe. We know that he's been cast as Nuitis Volko in the Aquaman movie, but we don't care. It's simply criminal that Willem Dafoe has never been the Joker. The man positively has the face for the role. Not only is he completely comfortable playing crazy people, such as his now iconic performance as the Green Goblin, but he's also able to get dark and greedy in movies such as The Hunter. His wide, unsettling smile and intense stare are uncomfortable to look at at the best of times, but with the bleached skin and green hair, it'd be perfect. In fact, he probably be the closest in appearance to the comics since Jack Nicholson in the 1989 Batman. Aside from being one of the best actors around, he has a huge following of fans that desperately want him to become the Joker. Think about it, guys. When will you ever see someone with a face this close to perfection ever play the Joker? Crispin Glover. If Willem Dafoe doesn't have the perfect face to play the Joker, then Crispin Glover certainly does. His prominent cheekbones, often greasy hair, long nose, and piercing eyes are all undeniably striking. Not only that, but while he's most famous for playing George McFly in Back to the Future, he is very good at playing the bad guy, and even better at playing weird, quirky characters such as his performance in Willard. While he is now only really performing in independent films and managing his own businesses, we can't imagine that he turned down the role as the Joker, especially when he's aware of all the fans that want him to play the role. Although he did say that he didn't think it was likely he'd get the role unless he was in another big film, he would certainly bring a dark but cartoonish edge to the Joker that hardcore comic fans would likely love. Daniel Day-Lewis. Considered to be not only one of the best actors working today, but one of the best actors of all time, Daniel Day-Lewis was rumored to be cast as the Joker as early as 2010, not long after Heath Ledger's death. The rumors speculated that he would be reprising Heath Ledger's role and he would be the main antagonist of the Batman film that would ultimately become The Dark Knight Rises. While this never happened, it has kept people wondering if Daniel Day-Lewis would ever one day play the role. Lewis is very selective of the roles he takes and has a surprisingly short filmography for such a long career. So we can't imagine him jumping at the chance to be in a Batman movie. We do, however, love the idea of an actor with the intensity and rigorous energy to play characters like the antagonists of There Will Be Blood and Gangs of New York taking over the role as the Joker, especially with Lewis's fine attention to detail. Michael C. Hall While the buzz around him has generally died down, there was a point in time where Michael C. Hall was all that some people would talk about. His breakout performances in Dexter and Six Feet Under were acclaimed, and his performance in the, well, admittedly pretty bad gamer made people hope that he would play the Riddler. We think that the Joker is the better fit here, though. The fantastic dance scene in Gamer is far more in character for the Joker than the Riddler. He has a suave, sophisticated vibe about him in Gamer, but he has a cold, unhinged edge as Dexter. If he blended the two and thought outside the box, he could make a great Joker. It's just a matter of whether fans would still be interested after he spent a lot of time out of the spotlight. Christian Bale The irony of the Joker and Batman being played by the same person is not lost on us. Christian Bale would make an incredible Joker, though, if his portrayal of Patrick Bateman in American 
Russian psycho is anything to go by, Patrick Bateman's random outbursts of anger and violence will no doubt remind people of the Joker, as well as how he repeatedly insists to people that he's insane. While the whole point of the movie is to poke fun of business and how they're so wrapped up in their own lives that they don't notice Bateman or his later delusions, Bale acts as a psychopath throughout, not to mention his commitment to losing weight for roles. In fact, he's a little too committed to that part. We could easily imagine him shedding the pounds and transforming into the Joker. Who knows? He may make for a better clown prince than Dark Knight. Patrick Wilson Commonly regarded as a scream king, former Night Owl Patrick Wilson really embraced the crazy in Insidious Chapter 2 when he played the possessed version of his character from the first Insidious movie. Never without charm, Patrick Wilson would probably make for the most gentlemanly take on the Joker. He would certainly bring some class back to the role after Jared Leto played the character as a ghetto pimp. Most importantly of all, Patrick Wilson has one hell of a crazed smile. The fact that his face seems so normal is part of what makes it work so much. He'll seem like an average nice guy and then plummets into the uncanny valley with that grin that becomes sickeningly wide. Gary Oldman Gary Oldman is an interesting actor. While many talk of actors being so good that they disappear into their roles, Gary Oldman is legitimately hard to recognize due to not only the quality of costume, but also the sheer way his mannerisms completely change. While he's already played Commissioner Gordon, Jim really was a waste of his acting potential, as he wasn't really able to effectively show off all that he could do as an actor. The Joker, on the other hand, would give Gary Oldman all the material he needs. While Oldman is already acclaimed for his portrayal of Norman Stanfield in Leon the Professional, considered to be one of the greatest cinematic villains of all time, it would be great to see him tackle an already iconic villain and put his own spin on it. Charlto Copley South African actor Charlto Copley is a guy who frequently gets the short end of the stick. For every one film he's in that he's legitimately excellent, such as District 9, he ends up in a subpar movie such as the Old Boy and A-Team remakes. One thing is consistent, however, and that is Charlto's performance. The man very rarely turns in a bad one. We also like the dynamic of having a South African actor play the role, with an entirely different accent that will give the character a unique voice, as opposed to trying to mimic Heath Ledger's voice a la Jared Leto or Mark Hamill's. Copley frequently has a tired look about him, the look of a disgruntled worker, which could make for an interesting take on the character. Perhaps Copley could play a tired Joker, trying to rediscover his love for crime, as opposed to a prime Joker who's loving every second of it. Leonardo DiCaprio Leonardo DiCaprio was a laughingstock in his early years. He was never a bad actor, but he was so known for his pretty boy love interest type roles that he wasn't taken seriously as an actor. Now that has definitely changed, and playing sociopaths seems to be turning into one of his specialties. DiCaprio is the definition of an over-the-top actor in performances like his in Django Unchained. This is not a bad thing either, as DiCaprio tends to either play himself or disappear so thoroughly into a cartoon-like character that you forget it's him. While he definitely plays a morally bankrupt Mr. Belfort in The Wolf of Wall Street, he is definitely acting more as himself in that role. If he can find a good middle point between the two to ground the Joker somewhere between something gritty like Heath Ledger's performance and somewhere over the top, we could have an amazing Joker on our hands. I will not die! These are all the ones we have time for today. Who would you cast in the role? Leave a comment and let us know. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and check out the rest of our channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to CBR for cool videos about movies, action heroes, gaming, comics, and more.